Hey Phantom, it's Aaron for a comic show. We have a great week of books this week. The biggest book is uh, Robert Kirkman's new Oblivion song. Here's the first issue. It's $3.99, it's exercised, and it was great. Robert Kirkman, um, you know he likes to do new things. You know he wrapped up Invincible, and he had this ready to go. He has like the very like first year of the books already done. He did an advanced copy of the first volume, like the first five issues or so already given to retailers. I read the whole thing. It was amazing. There's a twist at the end of the first issue, but that's not the real twist. There's a huge twist at the end of volume one that throws everything on its ear, much like the twist at the end of volume two, Invincible, threw everything on its ear. And when I spoke to Kirkman about it at the Image Expo, he's like, yeah, I managed to get it in in the first volume instead of the second volume, so kudos. And Kirkman has done so much for this industry. Uh, Walking Dead was a runaway success, you know, huge success on TV, and he used Talking Dead last Sunday to actually promote this book, promote comic shops, promote getting in comic shops, and other things he did with this is he said there's going to be no new printings. There's going to be no second print, no third print, no extra printings, but he overprinted it because he wants people that hear about it to be able to come in the stores and freaking buy it. And yes, I went super heavy on it, but not all stores probably went super heavy on it. So if Kirkman and his Skybound marketing machine and Image are promoting it and people come into the stores and are told, oh, we're sold out, there's a second print coming in in three weeks, please come back, they're not freaking coming back. I mean, they might come back for volume one, but they're not coming back for the first issue second print in three weeks. So thank you, Kirkman. You've taken in all of the retailers' suggestions, all of our feedback every year at San Diego, usually at New York Comic Con, and you, you freaking nailed it. And also, there's only one cover. This is the cover we're promoting, everyone's promoting. Come get this cover, not like 30 covers, like, oh, I didn't want that one, I want this one, I want that one, I, I want this cover. Oh, I'm sorry, that cover's a retailer exclusive that only this .com has. Um, no, there's this cover, come get it. There is one thing, though, there's one thing. Kirkman is, um, he's no saint when it comes to getting money. And that's wonderful. I, I don't care. I like money too. You know, I like good comics, but I like money. And here is what he did. It is a limited to 1,000. It's a statue. It's a uh, cover. That, it's the same cover. It's just forward instead of backwards. You see, it's the same thing like that. The cover says $200 on it because this entire box is $200. It has a lithograph. It has a, a uh, enamel pin. And it was allocated to um, one per store, and some stores got none because um, there's about 2,000 comic book stores and he only made 1,000 of this, so that was pretty cool. You can't have that, that's mine. But anyway, I just wanted to show it, and uh, you can find it on eBay. Um, <laughs> at Walking Dead came out this week, great issue, really digging this new town, and also Kirkman knowing that he's sending all of his fans into stores, timed his volume 29 of the Walking Dead out for this week too because he's a freaking comic book genius. So I'm done kissing Robert Kirkman's ass. Let's move on to the next uh, book. Gideon Falls number one, Jeff Lemire's new image book. It's exercised. It's, um, it's a mystery. It's horror. It's a priest that uh, comes to a town, gets assigned to this town after the last priest died. And then he gets visited by that priest's creepy ass ghost and then there's a crazy cliffhanger at the end. So um, if you are a fan of Jeff Lemire, you'll probably like it because all his work is very similar and um, very good. So you either like Jeff Lemire or you don't. It's a slow burn with a great cliffhanger. So there's that. Moving on to Marvel, Infinity Countdown, number one is out. This is where it actually starts, not you know the Guardians lead in and not the prime issue. This is, yes, it still says Countdown, but this is the beginning of the crossover event. We have the crossover checklist this week that um, it doesn't hit with tie-ins until May. So even April is only issue two. And it has, you know, explaining what all these stones are because they're stones now, not gems, because things got reset after uh, Secret Wars. And this issue was great. I think this is uh, Gary Dugan's uh, best of his career at Marvel, this issue. It's easily his best at Guardians of the Galaxy. Love the Groot. Love the Rocket Raccoon stuff. Uh, love his Ant-Man. There's a little inside joke in with Ant-Man in here with a sound effect that um, when you see it, you'll laugh. 
and it also had some Wolverine Black Widow stuff in the backup story. So uh, if you were getting Countdown, get this, obviously. It's great. And if you weren't, if you're on the fence, I'm telling you that issue rocked. Moving on to something else insane, Dan Slott is going down swinging. He's been doing Spider-Man for years now. He's going to end his final issue on Spider-Man with issue 800. This is 797, the last three-issue story arc. It was on fire already, last story arc, with the Red Goblin, a mix of Green Goblin and Carnage. And now this is, um, some crazy stuff happens here. And uh, Slot has been online trying to police the spoilers uh, with success, too, because, you know, he has goodwill. He has some clout. He's like, yo, buddy, can you maybe not put the spoiler in the headline title of your article? I know you're trying to get clicks, bro, but can people just enjoy the comic, you know? So, yeah, there's that. It, it was good. And there is a, a, um, a crazy spoiler that I am not going to tell you. So avoid the internet. Avoid, um, don't click on anything that says uh, review on this just until after you read it, just to be safe. And also for Venom's 30th anniversary, starts now with this um, Venom vs. Spider-Man $1 issue, which is Spider-Man 300. So get that. It's $1 if you want to commemorate his anniversary or if you just think it's cool. Uh, Avengers Part 9 is out. This is not the return of Banner Hulk. That is next issue. That is not a spoiler. That's on the cover. That was on the poster. That was on the ad. And on my invoice next week, it says uh, Avengers 684 Banner Returns. <laughs> like, literally. They have this much space to write something, and they're like, make sure we get that spoiler in there. But anyway, I ordered enough, I think, so let's go. Uh, Doctor Strange Damnation. This is uh, Donny Cates. Nick Spencer, issue two is out. We still have issue one. I'm enjoying this. Mephisto in Las Vegas, turning the Avengers into Ghost Riders. And um, of course he gets Ghost Rider to fight them and a whole slew of magic and magic adjacent characters. I enjoyed it. Witty banter, it's fun. Donny Cates can do no wrong. And then finally for Marvel, X-Men Red. Thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, Jean Grey and her crew get political asylum in Wakanda. Uh, you know, Wakanda Forever. I uh, love that movie. I, I actually just saw it yesterday because I've been so busy in Portland and whatnot. Great movie. I like that um, they're in Wakanda here. I like that he's supporting what Jean Grey is trying to do. And I really enjoyed it. It's easily my favorite X-Men book. Moving on to DC. Batman, Tom King is on fire. Issue 42 is out. It's uh, the Justice League versus Batman and Catwoman. Poison Ivy has taken over the entire world. Um, you know, she's able to make people in her proximity fall in love with her and do her bidding. Now she has come up with a way to take over the entire world. You find out how in this issue. Again, I'm not going to spoil how. It was kind of cool. What was really cool was um, what Bruce, what Batman does to um, try to get the upper hand in a world that uh, is fully controlled by Poison Ivy, where she controls the entire Justice League. So um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the wedding with issue 50. It's the countdown to that. See who will be the best man, who will be the, the maiden of honor, all that good stuff. Who's going to officiate? Let's go. And um, also, Bizarro verse, Superman. This was fun. It's um, father of Bizarro, which means son of Bizarro because it's opposite speak, because um, he has a son too. And uh, apparently, he has a dog, a cat, and a mouse. And it's a wacky good time. I'm enjoying this. If you were somewhat interested in what Tomasi was doing on Superman with uh, Gleason on art, check it out. It's great. And then finally, Young Animal, Shade the Changing Woman is out. This is um, a five-year jump. She's not a girl anymore. She's a woman. And what I loved about it was from the very first page, Rack Shade is here. We're talking about the um, the original Shade the Changing Man that I loved back when I was in high school, you know, like 18 years ago, <laughs> you know? Uh, I haven't hit my 20th anniversary yet, but I enjoyed her hanging out with him, getting advice from him, not necessarily good advice, but advice, and uh, I like Young Animal, I like what they're doing, and uh, it's fun. That's the week that is. Make sure you get Oblivion Song. Uh, it might still sell out, I don't know. Um, I can't predict that. Kirkman says he did a massive overprint. We'll see. But um, I have plenty. I will not be charging over cover price for it. And I'll have plenty for everyone that comes in, at least this week. 
So that's that. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.